Oh my god, that'd be a little baby. My next guest is an author, drag queen, chanteuse, and the most talented person I know, Tom Rasmussen. Oh, what an Cheers, accolade. I love Cheers. And that's gossip. Mm. I think that not only are you one of the most phenomenal writers that I know, um, and I said the most talented person I know, I think you have such a wonderful, expansive, beautiful view of love and sex and shame and romance. And a lot of that you have put into your first debut offering. Obsessed. J'adore it, go through the set and the champagne. Diary of a Drag Queen, again, available wherever good books are sold. This absolutely blew me away. But yeah, I want to, I want to talk about like, your, your love of your grandmother, because partly because I think that when we talk about love, um, even when we talk about queer love, I think, we, I think that people, the first instinct is to lean towards the, towards the, the romantic and towards, even, even towards the partner, not necessarily, because I think I have a writer, a writer acquaintance of mine who had said that all friendships are romances. Mm. Um, and, I, and I'm inclined to agree. I agree, um, yeah. How wonderful as well, I always think, when I look around yeah. at my friends, I'm always like, I'm how wonderful that I, like, I'm in love with you. Do you I know! know. I mean? What a special, but that's what queerness teaches you. Yes. And speaking of my grandma, queerness taught me to realise that I sort of was in love with her. Again, obviously, in a in a non-romantic way, but yeah. in a way that was more than, you know, she was sort of my idol and she was my teacher and she was so much and she loved me and took care of me. She was she taught me all about performance and show. And I think this is where we get gender wrong as well, in that she was so gender non-conforming in her strength. And I'm not saying obviously but if we're talking about typical typical ideologies of gender, right, mm. obviously. But she was like not any of those things. It was how she got through life. And my mum is the same. It's sort of like like intense strength, very brusque, very powerful, very in control of everyone mm. in the family. And also with this kind of amazing ability to really put on a show. And I remember mm. watching her when I was little. I would like be sat in her like living room and she had a chair, kind of like this, where there was a phone. It was also camp. <laughs> and she used to ha she used to have like a you know she used to say love and proper northern accent she was mm. from Yorkshire, and then she would answer and she'd be like hello and I was like <laughs> I'm fucking obsessed and I think like it's genius and she and we and we drive through I would always take Tuesdays off school because I'd say I had a sprained ankle but I wanted to hang out with my grandma, That's and so, so sweet. she would do this thing that I to this day I'm obsessed with she would drive around our village, and she'd actively beep and wave and people would wave back. And they'd like obviously know her, and I'd be like, "Who's that grandma?" And she'd be like, oh, "No idea." <laughs> and I was like, Move! "That is so drag! That it's so drag!" That's and it's so, it, drag. so much is lost. That's so to, us now. It's so us That's now. So Every smoking, I'm like, "Don't yes! come over because I don't know who you yes. are." And like, so she's really was the love of my life, and she taught me, I think, the power of performance and the power of making the best out of a really shitty situation. That was her whole life. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And she was a fucking legend. Ugh. To Dude. Kathleen. To Kathleen. To Kathleen. Oh. oh, to grandmas. I want you to tell me about thigh high, but Polly, I want to tell you to tell me about a certain individual called oh. Hattie Carmen in, in Diary of a Drag Queen, available where all good books are sold. You you talk about um, the relationship you have with Hattie, um, partly in this book, and also I mean there's there's one scene which I find wild, is like where where you where you guys you're at a festival, yeah. like you like masturbate together, yeah. and it's like yeah. that it's like fantastically intimate, but like I just. I'm like obsessed with that. Mm. Like you know, like tell let's tell me everything about about Hattie yeah. and the relationship, this this romance, this this lifelong romance. Well, I think Hattie and I die. met each other when we were both at like a specific juncture in life. We were like twenty one, had finished university, didn't really know what we were gonna do with our lives, and still don't. And um, Hattie had sort of had a quite a shit situation, and then I was looking for somewhere to live, and Hattie was like, "I'm obsessed with you. Come and live with me." And I was like, "I'm obsessed with you." Anyway. So we'd always been on each other's periphery for, for a while. Yeah. And then it was like that, I think that friendship was like the most mind altering, the most psychologically changing friendship I've ever had. We both still are like, are we in love with each other? Like we are. And we've really, again, through a very queer lens, allowed ourselves to like reach a place where we're like comfortable with what our confusing feelings are for each other. But like, you know, it, in, in a really crude way, she was definitely the first woman, not that I'd ever sexually desired, but that I'd, that I'd ever allowed myself to imagine. Because I think when I was growing up, coming out as gay so young, you have to constantly refute the idea 
of of being with a woman. Yes. And, it's, and, it, and what it does produce in a lot of gay misogyny. people, including me, is misogyny. So Hattie was the first person, A, to call that out in me, and B, to... And I called a lot out in her, we called a lot out in each other, we have a lot more calling out to do in each other, but we... It was just... I'd never experienced someone who thought like Hattie, which was like completely naturally. So, um, you obviously, you're, you're here today um, as, as Tom, but there is another incredibly formative, um, very bold character, heiress, author, author of War and Peace. I mean, the list goes on mm. and on. She's done everything and she's seen everything. Mm. And done everyone. And done yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, Tell me about Krista. Obsessed. Well, so Crystal is my drag character, or really, character feels wrong, just sort of, extension. she's like, extension, but again, extension feels wrong. It's so like, she feels like a really distinct person from me. And I think that's because of like, how I set her up when I was young. So when I was young, I she became sort of like the totem, if you will, for all the things that I couldn't be. So she was like, rich, international, I'd never left the country. She was, I'd never left my hometown. She was, you know, powerful, beautiful, knowledgeable, wise. And I was sort of like terrified, local, spotty, you know. And again, all of those things are really things that I've learned to value about my my life or my upbringing or whatever. But she was completely like a savior. The ultimate love of my life is this person that is not me. And it really sounds stupid because she came from no, me, but like she's a complete separate creation to me. And I can't like, I cannot do, I cannot be her. I could, if you asked me to do a Cristal now, I couldn't. It, I mean, I probably fucking could. No. But no, it wouldn't I, be the same I, I, no, energy I, I, or a, command. I have, I have the same partition in my head. Mm. In Because I, obviously I sound like this now. I have, mm. this very, I have this very British, very British accent. But I, I, I sometimes switch between, when like, if my sister or my, my mother or my dad calls me on the phone, my house is what I, I switched to the thickest Nigerian accent you ever oh had. But I can't, I can't summon it at will. Uh. Um, if I do, it's it, like it's stifled and it's bending. I need to be around, you know, I just need to uh. be, I need to be around within like, that other context, Nigerians yeah. within that context, you know. So I feel like we've, we've spent, we've, we've talked, we've talked all around um, like love and its different iterations. And I wanted, I wanted to know from you what you think love will look like um, going forward and what the discourse around love is is going to be and what you're hoping to contribute to it. I guess there's like multiple spheres of love. I think on a personal level, I think I'm with someone and I've been with them for five years and you know him obviously and yeah. all my friends do, but it's actually a really private part of my life. He's amazing and we've been together a long time and we're like best friends and we live together and love I've been thinking loads recently about since lockdown and 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 an audience. I've been thinking a lot about audiences because I'm currently yeah. writing a book about marriage. It's called First Comes Love and it comes out next year. And it's about this feeling I have for this partner where I was, we were in Italy last year and at my brother's wedding and I looked at him and for the first time in my life, I was like, I want to marry someone. Mm. And then I was harkened back to these feelings I had, but in a real way. And I was yeah. harkened back to these feelings I had as a teenager where I was obsessed with marriage, like obsessed with wedding films, obsessed with, I collect, I had a Did box. Did you have a folder? I had, I had a box. I had, I had a folder on my yeah. laptop where I collected. Right? Oh my God. And then, but, and it was literally like a cut of lace. It was so, so trash. I so live. And then moving into a really queer circle, I, you begin to understand that like as an intellectual idea, like structure, the and, state. Yeah, and power, and like power having the state legitimize that. And I feel like you have all of that, which is the very, it's like that against equality, the against, yes, against yes. equality framework, you know, like why are we assimilating? Why are we doing all of this? And then you end up, I feel like when you end up, you end up stranded between those those two points two of points. discourse where you either like, love wins, or you're like, you're like, fuck, love. fuck marriage, burn fuck this marriage. institution to yes. the ground. Like, and so that's um, the thing. And then, so the question I'm asking with this book is, can you have an intellectual or a political belief and an emotional difference to yeah. that belief? And how do you marry the two? I'm, I'm saying that we're in many ways contradictory and there, there's things that you shouldn't be contradictory on, but there are things that we are contradictory about. And this is what I'm trying to discuss in this book, basically with my own love life, which is like, I, I believe marriage to be trash as a system because of its history, because of its like gendered basis, because of the things it's allowed to justify through through history and currently. But I'm also being like, I desperately want it. I want in. And what does yeah. that mean? And I think it's really normative, but I want in. And my two biggest fears are loneliness and norm normality 
but they don't go hand in hand. So this is no, all the things don't. I'm asking. It feels weird to have to, to really want to tend towards the normal when all you've done for the last decade is the fire battle. against it, yeah. you know? So this is something I'm trying to work out. God, in terms of love as a, as a like population, I just hope there's more of it. I think there needs to be more of it. I think, my God, I think certain, a lot of things need to burn down. And then I think there needs to be a lot more love, basically. I think that I often think that everything that isn't love is the obstacle. Mm, that's such. Oh, Tam, that's beautiful. So Tom's next book, First Comes Love, will be out with Boomsbury in the summer of 2021. Um, but if you are itching to read more of their incredible, incredible musings, Diary of a Drag Queen is out right now with Penguin in both her back and paperback. And it's a phenomenal book. One in which Marina, uh, for Marina and Diamond's called So Human and Sweet and Rude. It's just, it's a wonderful book. Um, I love you very much. I love you too. Um, but yeah. And that's it's gossip. That's yeah. gossip, sis. I, we need to stop like, that, actually. It's yeah, disgusting. actually. <laughs> and that's gossip. But, that's, that's it.